continuing with this number 11. Now, normally, uh, if you, you had a quadratic trinomial, if it were x squared, an x, and a number, you could think uh, what times what gives you the last one that if you add together is the middle one. Normally, you would do put an x here and put an x there because x times x is x squared. However, you don't have an x squared. You have an x to the fourth. So you could still use this thought process of what times what is C that if you add it together is B, but what do these guys need to be? It can't be X times X. It needs to be what? X to the second times X to the second or X squared times X squared. That's right. And now you could go through and think what times what is my C value, positive 49, that if I combine together, give me a negative 50. That one's so easy that some people get confused. That's negative 49 times negative 1. Isn't that right? So, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, you could put the equal 0 here. And since you have uh, something times something equals 0, you could split them, right? Or you could continue to factor. So let's say you decided to split them. So you would have x squared minus 49 equals 0 and x squared minus 1 equals 0 and when you solved it you'd have x squared if you added 49 to both sides you'd have x squared equals 49 which means that when you do a square root and a square root you're going to get x equals plus or minus 7 that's two answers right there uh, over here if you add 1 and add 1 you're going to get x squared equals 1 and then you would apply a square root to get rid of the square. And once again, you would have x equals plus or minus 1. So you actually get four answers. Positive 7, negative 7, and positive 1, negative 1. Now, let's say that you didn't split right here. Let's say you didn't go equal 0 and equal 0. Let's uh, move this work to the side. You could have also done this. You could have taken the x squared minus 49, and you could have rewritten that as x plus 7, x minus 7. And you could have rewritten the x squared minus 1 as x plus 1, x minus 1. And it's still equal to 0. So you could have written it completely factored first and then split each one and say, okay, x plus 7 equals 0. That means x equals negative 7. This one would give you x equals positive 7. This one will give you x equals negative 1. This one will give you x equals 1. So you get the same exact answers if you completely factored or if you just uh, split them right from the start and solved. So either way, whatever you want to do it, whichever way you want to do it is fine. Right here, we split them each equal to 0 and solved with the square root. And it's the same thing. x plus minus 7, that means positive 7 and negative 7. So it's the same answer. I would write them with a plus minus to save space on your answer uh, sheet. Going to the uh, third page, the section 5.6 and 5.7, we decided to skip a lot of these because, I mean, it's a lot of work. Uh, so let's focus in on which one do you guys want to do, one or four? Pick one. Four. four? Okay, so notice that they're asking for f of negative three and f of four. So all that means is for you to substitute negative 3 into all of your x's and solve. These guys are weirding me out. Let me scratch them out because we're skipping these guys. So if I wanted to substitute negative 3, I would have to be very careful uh, and, and do all the steps plugging in negative 3. But I could also use synthetic substitution. If you're going to use synthetic substitution, what that means is that you, you're going to, in the box, plug in the exact value you want to substitute. And then over here, you want your coefficients, and you want to represent all of them from highest exponent down to smallest. So if we look at it over here, uh, there's a coefficient of 1 on the power of 4. There's a, there is no power of 3, so you, you have to remember that it's like a 0x to the third. And then there's a negative 2x squared, a negative 1x, and a negative one x and also a positive seven at the very end. So let me write down those coefficients over there. We have the coefficient of one, zero, 
negative 2, negative 1, and 7. Let me zoom in now. So what we're going to do is uh, bring down the 1 and then go negative 3 times 1 is what? Negative 3. And then when you go down 0 and negative 3, what's that? And then when you go up, negative 3 times negative 3, what's that? Positive 9. And then when you go down, negative 2 plus 9 is what? 7. And when you go up, you're multiplying. Negative 3 times 7? Negative 21. And then as you go down, you combine. Negative 1 and 21. Negative 21? Negative 22. And as you go up, you multiply. Negative 3 times negative 22? That's positive 66. So remember that the last number on long division is your remainder, but your last number on synthetic substitution is your final answer, which will be, uh, what is this, 73, right? So that's your answer. So the reason why I, uh, the reason why I deleted the middle ones is because there's not enough space to do all of them. So we already did f of negative 3 and we got 73 so if you want to write that go for it the the notation f of negative 3 equals 73 but we also need to do this one f of 4 so let me go over here and do f of 4 right here if I'm gonna plug in 4 I'm gonna put that exact value in the box 4 and then I'm gonna write my coefficients 1 negative 2 no I'm sorry 1 0 one zero because of the x to the third there is no x to the third and then negative two and then negative one and then positive seven so as you go down the one comes down one plus nothing is one and as you go up four times one is four as you go down you multiply uh, you you combine sorry zero plus four is four as you go up, 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 2 plus 16 is 14. And then 4 times 14 is 66? 56. Thank you. And then negative 1 and 56, as you go down this way, negative 1 and 56 is? 55. 55. And then 4 times 55 is 220. Okay, thank you. 220. And remember, on division, this last part's your remainder, but in synthetic substitution, the last part is your answer, which means that the answer is 227. So on this one, F of 4 equals 227. That's your final answer for that one. So let's move on to another question like number 18 where they give you a factor and they want you to find the remaining factors. So here's a polynomial, it's a cubic polynomial and they give you one of the factors. Okay, now if it's a factor then the remainder should be zero if you went through long division, right? So let's actually go through that, let's go through long division to prove that the remainder is zero to prove that x minus one really is a factor. So if you're going through long division, you gotta think opposite of what you see here with the x, which is gonna be simply a positive one right in there. And then let's go for the coefficients. One, seven, seven, negative 15. Let's draw a line. And one plus nothing is one. But then when you go one times one, what do you get? one and when you combine seven and one what do you get eight. eight and when you go one times eight what do you get fifty eight and then seven combined with eight gives you fifteen and then when you go up you multiply one times fifteen is fifteen and we knew that because when you combine these the remainder is zero so if I told you that this is a factor, then for sure the remainder is going to be zero. So why are we even doing this? We're doing this to be able to get the remaining polynomial right here. 
the remaining polynomial. So what do I mean by the remaining? If you know that x minus 1 is a factor, that means that you could take number 18 and rewrite it as x minus 1, and this other one is going to be x squared plus 8x plus 15. You take the numbers and you just put the coefficients. The last number will always be the constant without the, without the variable. These are the coefficients, but the last number is always the constant without the variable. 8 is going to be with x, 1 is going to be with x squared. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, you still need to try to keep factoring. Let me repeat that. You still need to try to keep factoring. In other words, this is a quadratic trinomial. So if I were to look at this guy right here and try to factor it further. Yep, 3 por 5, which would be 3 times 5, right? Plus 3 plus 5. Because 3 times 5 gives me the 15, and if I add 3 and 5 together, it gives me the 8. So when I ask for what are the remaining factors, now you already knew that x minus 1 was a factor. If you write it on your answer, that's okay. I won't mark it wrong. That's good. But the remaining factors are the x plus 3 and the x plus 5. That's what I'm really looking for, x plus 3, x plus 5. Let's just do one more example. Number 19, um, they give you this cubic polynomial, and they give you this x minus 3 as a factor of this, okay? So the way to do it is to, in the box, put the positive 3, the opposite of what you see here with the x, Remember, this is a factor, x minus 3, the binomial is a factor, so in here you're going to put positive 3, then you're going to put all the coefficients, 1, negative 9, positive 27, and negative 27. So let me do that. Have 1, have a negative 9, positive 27, and negative 27. So you draw your line, and as you take this number and go down, it you add it so one plus zero is one and as you go you take this three and you multiply it one three times one is three and it comes up here so you end up with a three up here and as you go down you combine negative nine plus three that's negative six and as you go up you multiply it. three times negative six is negative eighteen and as you go down you combine twenty seven minus 18, that's uh, 9, and when you go up, you multiply 3 times 9 is positive 27, the remainder is 0, that shouldn't surprise anybody, because if you divide something by its factor, then yeah, the remainder has to be 0, that's a remainder theorem, that's the truth about the remainders, 8 divided by 4 is 2, it doesn't have a remainder, because uh, 4 is a factor of 8. So, what's the purpose of doing this synthetic division? Because this down here is what's left over. That's your leftover polynomial. Now, remember, this first number is just the constant. So, that's just 9. The middle term is going to be a negative 6x. Now, that 9 is positive, so you could put a plus in front of it. And the very first number 1 is really just a 1x squared. So it's pretty easy because you start with the constant, and then you go up with the x term, and then x squared. If there was another one, it would be x to the second, or x to the third, and so on and so on. So this is your remaining uh, polynomial. Could you continue factoring? The answer is yes. Because what times what is 9, that if you add together is negative 6, that would be a negative 3 times a negative 3. So ladies and gentlemen... All the factors of this cubic polynomial is really just x minus 3 times x minus 3 times the original x minus 3. So state all the factors. I would write both of these. Yeah, you could write it as x minus 3 squared. Or you could even write all three of these if you want. Um, visually, that just means that it crosses the x-axis at the value of 3 and only at that one spot.